this podcast, you're going to be learning how to draw atoms. You're going to need three things before we get started. You're going to need a pen or pencil, you're going to need your periodic table, and then a blank piece of paper or notebook paper to write on. So you're going to need those three things. You need to pause the video and come back. You're welcome to do so. Before we get started with our actual drawings, you're going to uh, need to write down this statement. Electrons are arranged in energy levels within the electron cloud. If we look at this picture, this picture is showing these uh, orange and blue dots um, in the center. We call that the nucleus of the atom. Also, you notice these bands, these uh, rings. We call these things energy levels. In this case, I can see one there and two there. So in this particular atom, whatever it is, it has two energy levels. Now it's important to know that each energy level can hold a different number of electrons. The first energy level can hold a maximum of two electrons. The second energy level can hold a maximum of eight electrons. And the third energy level can also hold a maximum of eight electrons. Now this number sequence might seem familiar to you because you wrote down 2818 uh, when you were doing your initial research with your web quest. Well, in reality, the third energy level really can hold um, 18 uh, electrons. I'm just gonna write in reality. So when you go to take an actual chemistry course, you'll be looking at it that way. But for this course, we're going to know it as 288. Okay, very good. You're going to need your periodic table next. Now, if you remember, the periodic table is divided into groups and these rows, which we call periods. Let's count the number of atoms in each period, or at least the first three. The first one has hydrogen and helium. That is two electrons. The second row or second period has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's lithium through neon, eight. And the third, sodium through argon, also has eight. So if you ever forget how many electrons can be held in each energy level, all you need to do is count the atoms in your periodic table um, in the whatever period it, it is in. We're going to be doing two examples today. One's lithium, the second is neon. Both of these are in period two, which means that they're going to be both using two energy levels. If we were to draw hydrogen, it would only use one energy level since it's in the first period. If we were to draw sodium, it would need three energy levels. So we can figure that out based upon the periodic table. So it's a great tool to use and it's very important that you understand how to read it and use it well. Our first example here is neon. Now in order to draw any atom, there are three things that we need to know. Number of protons, electrons, and neutrons. If you remember from a previous podcast, to find the number of protons, you need to use the atomic number. In this case for neon, it's 10. Now that atomic number is also equal to the number of electrons. That's also from a previous podcast. And to find the number of neutrons, if you remember, we need to take the atomic uh, weight, which is 20, and do a little subtraction with the atomic number. 20 minus 10 is 10. I'm going to pop that number in over there. So we know that neon has 10 protons, 10 electrons, and 10 neutrons. To draw the atom, it's very easy. We're going to uh, kind of use a planetary model. You can think of electrons traveling around the nucleus like planets go around the sun. It's not like that in reality, but it will help us to understand it a little bit better. So I'm going to start with this circle. This is going to represent the nucleus. If you remember, the two things that go in the nucleus that make up most of the weight are protons and neutrons. So I'm going to put a 10p in there, which stands for 10 protons, and a 10n, which stands for 10 neutrons. Now remember I said neon 
is in the second period, so we're going to need two rings. You'll see why in a second, two energy levels. Now, neon has a total of 10 electrons. If you recall from the previous uh, things that we just wrote down, the first energy level can hold a maximum of two. So I'm just going to plop down two. And we have eight remaining. The first energy level, again, can only hold two. And the electrons are filled from the, the innermost energy levels, and they build outward. That's how it works. So we have eight left. So I'm going to draw these in pairs. It's easier to count them when we get to higher numbers of electrons. Hey, there we have it. We have drawn neon. We've used all 10 electrons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have a total of 10 electrons. Now remember, the second energy level can hold a maximum of 8, and we have filled that completely. This is what atoms this is the state the atoms like to be in. They like to have their outer energy level completely filled. If they don't, they're either going to give away electrons or try to take them in from other atoms. And you'll see that example with lithium in a moment. But before we continue, there's one important vocabulary word that you need to know, and that's valence. The electrons on the outer ring only are called valence electrons. This really determines their chemical properties and what they bond with and things like that. So it's a really important thing to know. So this is our electrons in the outer energy level. So it's the electrons in the outer energy level. In this case, neon would have eight valence electrons. So we could just count them up again. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is another important vocabulary word. You should have written that down. Okay, one more example to go, and that would be lithium, as promised, as our second example. Just as we do with all things, we have to find our numbers of protons, electrons, and neutrons. Again, to start, the number of protons is equal to the atomic number, which is 3. The same thing with the number of electrons. And in this case, the neutrons, we would do 7 minus 3, and we would get 4. And I would plug that in over here. So I'm going to draw this over here. Start with my nucleus. I'm going to write 3p and 4n, just to represent my number of protons and neutrons. Those two are done. Now we have a total of three electrons. Only two can fit on the first energy level. One, two. That leaves me with one left over. That needs to go on the second energy level. Now remember, I'm just going to put this anywhere. Now remember, since lithium is in the second period, it means that it needs two rings, and that's exactly what we have here. So we have our total of three electrons. So this is normal lithium. You have a page where you're going to be filling out where you draw atoms and their ions. This is your first one. So this was lithium. Lithium has how many valence electrons here? Well, if you take a look, there's only one. So it has one valence electron. All right. Now, on this side, we're going to draw the lithium ion. You may have heard of lithium ions if you use batteries, which most people do. So a lithium ion has a positive charge to it. Remember, ions will either have a positive or negative charge to them. That's because electrons are being added in or taken away. Okay? I should say taken away or added in. Well, they will be positive or negative, and it's based upon uh, what they want to do to become stable. All atoms want to become happy by having their outer ring filled. Lithium is nowhere near that, you can see. It would need seven more electrons to, to fill this second energy level. It turns out, though, that 
lithium has a positive charge because it gives away one electron, resulting in having three protons and two electrons. I'll show you how this works. So our nucleus of all the ions are going to be exactly the same as their regular atom. And in this case, I'm going to draw one, two electrons. I'm done. There's the ion. The outer ring is filled because there are no more electrons. Remember, the first energy level can hold a maximum of two. So this is it. Since I have this on the side, think of it this way. I have three protons right now and two electrons. One positive and one negative will cancel each other out. We're just left with that. That's why it has a plus sign there. Really, there could be a one, but it's an implied number. The lithium ion, if we do this, has two valence electrons. Two electrons in its outer ring. just happens to be its only ring in this case. So there you have it. You know how to draw atoms and their ions. If you have any questions, you can go back and watch this again or rewind to any other part that you missed.